Well, hello again, and uh, we are going to continue with uh, lecture four of eschatology. And I hope you're getting your diagram ready. I hope you've been doing all your homework and uh, the assignments, getting ready for those. Um, we have two more lectures left, and uh, we're going to start off with lecture four, but let's just pray before we begin. Father, we thank you that we can be here. We thank you that we can hear your word, we can study your word, and Lord, we thank you that there is always hope and that you always have a plan. And we just bless your name this day, this evening, this morning, wherever we may be as we hear this, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to begin with the next um, group of judgments that come upon the earth, and that is the seven trumpets. Again, I think by now you'll have this form, so you could either just follow with um, as you look at this form, and you'll see on there we have the seven trumpets with the scripture references, each number of trumpets. Remember, each scripture reference and each fact that is in order between one and seven you'll get a point for you won't you won't get it right if you if you name trumpet three as trumpet four obviously that would be the wrong order so for every fact and every scripture you will get a point um, to make up the fifth the, the 50 points on this tribulation timeline um, the figures there the seven years the mid-tribulation um, uh, the facts and figures if you have a look on this uh, graph uh, with 144,000 are raised up with Revelation 14. There's two points already um, where Satan is cast out of heaven. Uh, there are witnesses which we'll speak about uh, that witness for 1,260 days towards the middle of the, of the second half, which is the Great Tribulation, because the Tribulation is divided into three parts, three and a half, I'm sorry, into two parts. The Tribulation is divided into two parts, three and a half years and three and a half years. The second known as the Great tribulation so as you look through these you'll see even for three and a half years three and a half years there are two marks so it's quite simple um, and there's a lot of facts here there's a lot that you can look at and uh, i think it's just exciting for what's happening and uh, enjoy uh, get to studying so lecture four there are seven trumpets just like there were seven balls that we read uh, not balls uh, we had uh, previously now I've, now, I've, now i've gotten lost and now you can see I uh, have seven seals. Uh, the bowls are still to come. So the first would be the seven uh, seals, now the seven trumpets, and then we're going to look at the seven bowls. So the first trumpet that gets blown basically is found in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 7. And it's quite easy if you look at uh, the facts and things that you need. Everything sort of goes in order. So Revelation chapter 8 and verse 7, the Bible says, The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood. And they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. This is a direct judgment from God. Literally, hail, a third of all the trees are burned. Hail falls on the ground. There's a lot of damage. Think of after a small hailstorm that we would have. Think of the damage that there is. Um, it's amazing to see that, if you think about it, the plant life that was created first seems to be the first that's destroyed in the judgment against nature. Uh, this also, uh, just for interest's sake, is similar to the seventh plague of Egypt. And this is literally going to happen. So the first trumpet is vegetation is struck. And Revelation 8 verse 7, there we go. The second trumpet is the seas are struck. So notice the order, first vegetation, then the seas are struck. Um, Revelation 8 verse 8 says, Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So a third of the seas, the Bible says, becomes like blood or blood. The sea occupies a third of the earth's surface. And so after the vegetation is struck, then the seas are struck. Um, what the burning mass is, we are not told. But if you think about what John would have seen, that the seas turned into blood, uh, just a thought here is perhaps it could be oil. Does that not look like blood in water? And the burning mass uh, doesn't oil light up as well. So uh, we'll look at this a little bit more. But just to think of the seas that are struck, a third of the seas are struck. Then the third trumpet is blown and the waters are struck. So not only the salty waters, which is the seas, but now fresh water. Revelation 8 verse 10 says, Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs 
of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became, became Wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. So the question has to be asked is, asked is what is Wormwood? Well, Wormwood simply means uh, um, something to, that makes bitter. And uh, so this falls uh, and, and affects a third of all the fresh waterways and rivers uh, in the earth and on the earth. And the star probably is like some kind of meteor or something that would fall on and strike the waters and make them bitter and just spread throughout a third of them. Um, wormwood also is a, a name that's used metaphorically in the Old Testament and it represents idolatry and sorrow. So this star will poison the water and bring judgment on man for idolatry and injustice. So just think about a third of things uh, constantly dying because if if man can't drink the water and it's poisoned everything in the sea, everything in that, that where, where the third is affecting that area, things will die if they don't get away from it. The fourth trumpet is the heavens are struck. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12 says, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that the third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine and likewise the night. And I looked and I heard the angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Imagine one third of the moon, the sun, and the stars are struck. The laws of nature here in these trumpets, in these judgments, have been severely, severely disturbed, greatly disturbed. And um, this is become so great as the tribulation has moved on. So the first four trumpets are indirectly on man, but they are directly on nature. The first four trumpets. But the last three, this is why the Bible says, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the last three trumpets are basically woe trumpets. They are warning trumpets. These things are it's just going to be terrible. So let's read about the fifth trumpet. I'm sure as you're reading through this with me, you're realizing, wow, I'm glad. and I really don't want to be here during this time um, with the earth under such strain and with such judgment going on. Revelation chapter 9, we're going to read from verse 1 all the way down to verse 12. So just follow with me and make notes as, as you go. Then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. Here is another. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Now remember, a third of the moon, a third of the sun, sun has, has, has been struck. So it's already darker. Now here it's saying that the sun and the air were darkened even more. It's going to be a very dark period. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power as the scorpions have power on the earth. So the locusts are like scorpions. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and on their faces were like, uh, they were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair and the teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and, they were, and their stings were, uh, were in their tails. Their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek his name is Apollyon. Woe is the first woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. So now, if we just look at the scripture just briefly, there is so much in this chapter, in this passage here. But if we look at the fallen star from heaven, it's most likely not a literal star because the star takes a key and opens. So how can a star really hold a key? 
uh, throughout the Bible, we see that stars uh, are referred to as angels. If we see in Job chapter 38, verse 7, I've got some scripture references here. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13, Revelation 1, verse 2, Jude 13. Um, uh, stars are related to as angels. In fact, uh, some even believe that this could be Satan because he fell like lightning from and like a star, like a fallen star. So um, who this is, we don't know, but it's going to be someone to open that bottomless pit. The locusts here, as we read, are not ordinary locusts. They don't come onto the earth and eat the grass that's left and things like that. Um, also notice, funny how the grass has come back after the famine. It always does come back. So things are starting to look okay, I suppose. Even though a third of things are destroyed, there is still going to be green grass and it's starting to grow back um, even through this time. Um, even though the nature, nature has been harmed. The 144,000 who have the seal are not tormented because these are the ones with the seal from God. As we read, those with the seal, the score, the, the, these locusts will know not to harm them and they will not be harmed in any way, but everyone else uh, will be harmed and want to die, but death will not come near them. Uh, for five months, they will be, um, they, they will be tormented and uh, uh, people will not be able to die. It's like being stung over and over again, perhaps, and hurt over and over again, and pain over and over again, but not being able to die. So here are some facts about the trumpet and the locusts. So what we read about, and it's, it's, uh, I think this is all in your book. Uh, yes, in fact, it is. Uh, number one, these locusts have a king, and that's why the bottomless pit we know is not empty. Number two, the fire won't affect the locusts. Fire normally affects locusts. Um, there is no creature in hell besides those who have sinned. Luke 8, 26 talks about how Jesus cast the demons into the swine. These creatures are controlled. Uh, they cannot be destroyed. They're intelligent. They have power to torment like a scorpion would. And their description proves that they are not normal and ordinary creatures. Something that we have never seen before. Moving on from there. I'm sure you've, as, as you've looked at this, you don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. The sixth trumpet is the angel from the Euphrates. And let's read Revelation chapter 9. Then the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying, in the, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. We've seen a third of the moon, the stars, a third of the earth, a third of the waters, a third of the sea and the, and the fresh water. Now here, remember on mankind, these last trumpets, a third, the, the four angels had prepared the hour and day uh, to, re, to be released and kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. And he says, I heard the number of them. It's just like an, so many. It's just a great, great army. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat in them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths, for their power in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not represent of the, uh, sorry did not repent of their of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver. So this is all going to come back again. People will create idols and they will have things that they're going to be worshiping made out of silver, brass, stone, wood. Uh, and they did not repent of their murders and their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. So it's amazing to see how even though a third of mankind is killed, people will still turn away from God and they will still do what they were doing. So we see here that um, there are certain things that are bound here, which we just read. Uh, and this really, what is bound in this passage of Scripture are bad angels, because why would a good angel be bound? The, 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 the question has to be asked is why they were bound. Um, so moving on from there, um, within what we've spoken about, the four facts about the horses um, is the horsemen were not demons, but people. 
the horses are not genuine. Maybe they were tanks. Maybe it's something that's been created uh, because John wouldn't have known what a tank is. And if you think of fire coming out of something's mouth, uh, perhaps something like that. And the horse that he saw had fire power. Um, so um, some say that these will be demons. Some say, uh, you know, <laughs> you can think of things. In fact, if we look at a lot of programs that are out there or movies, uh, they often use characters characters that are sort of created in the Bible, they use them in their movies uh, uh, um, for those characters. But here, the bottom line is this, uh, by, the, this by these three plagues, another third of mankind is killed because they still refuse to repent. You have a diagram there uh, in your book, and just have a look at that diagram and just see um, what takes place. It's quite interesting to see how it just progresses. So just look at that diagram now uh, for a few seconds and just see how many people and what uh, has been lost on this earth and how many people have died up until this point. And we're going to move on to the seventh trumpet. So you can just look at that. It's quite interesting. The seventh trumpet introduces the bowls. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 says, Then the seventh angel sounded and blew his trumpet. And there was loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat upon, uh, before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God. This is almost like the beginning of the end of the end, sort of the beginning of eternity. Uh, it is now and it will now be seen that evil is coming to an end, and it almost gives hope to the saints uh, that are left on earth that maybe things uh, are, are going to be better for them but it's again things are still going to happen that are incredibly great and mighty and powerful and and uh, cause a lot of destruction the kingdom of this world is the cosmos that's the word cosmos has become the kingdoms of our god so this is the beginning of the end of satan's rule on earth and he doesn't like it and so he's going to do everything in his power to cause havoc and the last seven final judgments actually become the worst of all judgments just when you thought it couldn't get bad or any worse it gets even worse it gets um, terribly bad and so we're going to read about these and I know even more so you're going to be glad that um, according to the, the timeline that we're learning the rapture is going to come and we will not be a part of that uh, that is why it is important for you and I, wherever we have the opportunity, um, we cannot take anything of ours to heaven. We cannot take our possessions. It's only people. And so we're going to end there uh, and we'll continue with lecture five next time. God bless.